Football. Fußball. Football. Calcio. Vospol. Futus. Subutio Mopopolis. <laughs> Go. Bowfoot. Kikatoa. Soccer. Yoshi. Football. In any language, it means exactly the same. A roller coaster of expectation, exasperation, desperation, perspiration, and constipation. <laughs> As the funnel of football life becomes choked with emotion. Look closely, Scotland. The race goes on. The cycle begins again. The game is never ending. But before any glorious new dawn, there must be a dark night. And for all true fans, that dark night came in the shape of a European Championships without a national team taking part. Why no black armbands? Why no rally in George Square with guest speaker Tommy Sheridan? <laughs> Why no march to the Scottish Parliament to demand change? Why the passive acceptance of this scunnering scunner? Failure. There's an awful danger we get used to it. We can make all the excuses we want, but the bottom line is this. Scotland, the nation that gave the world the television, the telephone, and the tatty scone, <laughs> did not take part in Euro 2004. But here, tonight, we can at least imagine what it might have been like if we had. <laughs> Hi, Boogie Dive Bomb here. <laughs> uh, sorry, I, I do apologize. Um, Boogie, 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 boogie boy from Company C. You know, no, that's not right either. Um, I, right. <laughs> Cheers, thanks. Um, Dougie Vipond here, saying, um, "Welcome to Munchtime Sports Scene 2004 <laughs> Portugal Preview Report Mismatch of the Day." Later on. Gordon Smith, Sandy Clark, Gordon DL, and Walter Smith will be discussing if there are any more ex Rangers personnel sports scene could be given a job to. <laughs> Paul Elliott will be talking about the tie of the tournament. <laughs> His blue and yellow polka dot number, and with a double wins or not. And, um, Rona McLeod will be, will be meeting some very unusual Tartan Army foot soldiers. Ones that aren't drunken arseholes in kilts. <laughs> but first, some serious sports broadcasting. Yes, this is me, Chick Young, standing where I am, which is here. The Elmer Fudd of Scottish football. The man from Del Monkey. And the big question for all of us in the lodge sports scene. Mm. 
BBC official license fee funded jolly to Portugal as we lap up the sun, sip up the wine and squirt out the chicken pity pity <laughs> is what country should we be supporting? My broxy bear boxers are torn on the horns of a dilemma. First up is my beloved country, Holland. <laughs> With its totally sensational, magnificently superb, utterly glorious house of a ranger. Plus former Ibrox god, Dick Advoca. <laughs> Not forgetting Gio, Gio. Then there's Croatia, who I didn't give a toss about until Dado Posso said he was coming to Ibrox. <laughs> and let's not forget England, eh? Elizabeth's 11, Britannia's battlers. Apparently, 30% of Scots want England to do well. To be honest, that figure surprised me. Only 30% of Scots are Rangers supporters. <laughs> and then there's another country, who is it? Oh, aye, Scotland. <laughs> But getting back to the beautiful game, this competition really is a Pandora's box of contrasting skills and tactics. There's some stunning individual talents. Nedved, Totti, Zidane, Lovenkrantz. <laughs> and some interesting tactical formations too. 4-4-2, 4-3-3, 3-5-2. 118, 118. <laughs> and to discuss all that, I'd like to bring in our, our expert pundit, former manager of Scotland and Preston North End away, <laughs> Craig Brown. Hello there, Chicklet. Uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm quite intrigued by what you were saying there. So tell me, <laughs> who is this Pandora? And um, <laughs> when exactly is she opening her box? <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Portugal is such a wonderful place to have such a, a great big tournament. I, I come here very often and I, I, I really like it. Uh, apart from the football facilities, well, they've also got lots of the kind of restaurants I like, you know, ones that have really extensive wine lists, plus paper tablecloths and cranes for my girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> as for the football, well, if you want real analysis, then surely you'd be better off switching to Sky! Hi, Jim White here. <laughs> Prisoner cell block H. <laughs> and if Emily's going uh, my way home tonight, if you could give me a lift home, that would be great. <laughs> Cheers, mates. Um, so, Charlie, um, Euro 2004, Scotland are there. Uh, we made it, despite Bertie Votes, who, who you've been giving pelters to. Uh, so let's face it, mate. I mean, you're going to have to start munching some serious humble pie. <laughs> and definitely no, James. <laughs> and rightly so. This speaks volumes for itself in spades. Surprise-wise, well, we're talking top drawer of the quality tree. Yes, I will opinionate that previously-wise, I have ascertained that under Bertie votes, <laughs> Scotland are not good enough to beat Andy. And today, I stick by my hindsight. <laughs> because in the pre previous last two games, OK, results-wise, they, they have improved, but only in the sense that they have got better. But 
shoved him, and I, I hear where you're coming from. They played with a, with a bounce and a freak, but one, one spring doesn't make a swallow. And, well, you know, this is just the turkeys coming home to roost for a chat amongst the pigeons. Right, well, cheers, Charney. What a load of pigs. Uh, tell me, um, anything else, mate? Well, only that we must be conscientious because we can't just go charging in there, bum ho. <laughs> so let's cool the beans because we're, we're up against quality teams with skill in our bundles. And <laughs> let's show a bit of steel. Let's show that we have the eye of the Tadger, you know. <laughs> Because when it comes to the crunch, you know, you don't want to bite the land that feeds you. <laughs> sure. Uh, well, do you agree with Charlie? You can let us know by emailing us on www.whatthefuckishetalkingabout.com. <laughs> right. Uh, So much for Scotland's chances, but what about some of the other good proddy countries in the tournament? <laughs> Alan McAnally has, surprise, surprise, been looking at Germany. Yup, we, uh, mm, yup, uh. Ich bin ein Binnweiner. Uh, uh. Okay, okay. Put it this way, but uh, the Germans are a nation I know very, very well from my time with with Munich in Bayern, in Bayern, in Germany. And you know, you know, they have a population of what a billion zillion, and um, all of them are, are great, great, good, good, good personal fronts of myself. <laughs> and you know, they've all been saying to me, they've been saying, Alan, Nelly, big, big Nelly. You know, you can never write off the Germans. You can never write off the Germans. Apart from this year, because they're rubbish, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> see, mm, right, uh, 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 uh. what you've got to remember is that the German mentality is a winning mentality. Or as they say in Germany, a winning mentality. <laughs> and um, it's not enough for them to, to qualify or even do well, you know. They, they've got to win it. They have to win it, you know. And in that way, they are unique, just like Italy and France. But um, <laughs> listen, bud, don't just take my word for it. You know, if you don't think that Sky provides the ultimate in football coverage, then you can always try STV. And the all new, great, great, good, 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 Scott Sport. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jim Delahunt. <laughs> Knowing wink. Uh... <laughs> And throughout Euro 2004, we in Scottsport will be bringing you the very best of the action from every Scottish First Division match. <laughs> plus the Junior Cup final. <laughs> they don't come much bigger than that. <laughs> Another knowing wink nod of head. Uh, but never mind that, the real news is that Scott Sport, the home of the highlights, if the cameraman's been concentrating, <laughs> is back with me, knowing wink, nod of head, touch of trendy sideboard. <laughs> Plus Scottish football legend, Julianne Sinclair. <laughs> That's right, I join me 
Julian Sinclair for strange intonations and the very best mispronunciations in Scottish football. I'm Sarah O. And I've no idea what I'm doing here either, but <laughs> I'll just keep talking and trying to think about the studio audience behind me staring at my arse. <laughs> Hello, I'm Andy Walker. And believe me, the look of terror in my eyes is genuine. <laughs> Woo! I'm Archie McPherson and now... Uh, I'm 82, you know! And I'm Graham Spears. You know, without wishing to procrastinate or even pontificate it's perhaps worth ruminating over the fact that I used to be a serious journalist, but now it seems to me that I live my life like a candle in the wind. <laughs> Scotch, but knowing wink and draw attention to hairstyle that I'm far too old for. <laughs> There's nothing else on, so you might as well watch it. Hello, Jim. Yes, Jim. Well, Jim. Uh, Davy Proven here, Jim. And I've, I've just had Paul Curry announce the latest listing figures. And apparently, Radio Clyde now has more listeners than there are people living in the whole of Europe. <laughs> and that is sheer tremendous. But... Uh, but getting back to Euro 2004, uh, I know Big Derek has already tipped Rangers to win it. Uh, <laughs> while Mark Hatley thinks the final could be, be between... <laughs> that's easy for me to say. Could be between uh, um and er. Uh, uh. As for me, I think I might just go for possibly Sweden. Uh, player of the tournament, very, very difficult, you know, to name one from all those quality players. Henrik Larsson! Uh, sorry, uh, Hugh Keevans, uh, did you want to come in here? The draw bridge is up. The biscuit tin is closed. Celtic are a club in crisis. Oh, sorry, wrong moan. Uh, <laughs> Scotland are a shambles. The team is saying nothing, the management is saying nothing, the SFA is saying nothing. The little boys who say, can I watch your motor for you, mister, are saying nothing. <laughs> In fact, nobody is saying anything, apart from the nobodies with nothing to say. <laughs> like John Motson. Yes, uh, good evening, uh, Motty here. And would you believe it? England versus Portugal, the quarterfinals of the European Championships. And of course, it goes without saying that in the spirit of Trafalgar, Agincourt, Waterloo, and Culloden, um, <laughs> England expects that we will fight them in the midfield, we will fight them in the wings, we will fight them in the penalty box. We will never surrender, and this surely will be England's finest hour. And I just hope there's no trouble from any British fans. Um, <laughs> honestly, can't think why they get so fired up. Uh, I'm just wondering now if we want to bring in a voice of reason at this point, Someone who can bring some, some sanity to proceedings. Someone like Dennis Law. <laughs> well, 
know, as you say, you know. When I was with uh, Manchester United in uh, Manchester City in uh, Torino, you know, they used to say, they used to say that I had uh, an old head and young shoulders. They did, you know. <laughs> well, now they just say I've got young hair and an old head, you know, but uh, that doesn't bother me, you know, because all that really matters now, you know, all that really matters is Portugal, right? And the competition to win the 2004 Euros, you know, which is a lot of money. Now, <laughs> well, it, now, the first question, right, first question is, is why Portugal? Huh? Well, obviously, the answer is, is, um, <laughs> well, why not? You know, I mean, come on. I mean, just as when I was with uh, Chirino in Italy, you know, I mean, the Italians were very good at bringing through young Italian players, you know. But Portugal is a country is very good at bringing through young Portuguese players, you know. Uh, well, they are, you know, very, very good at it, you know. Apart from the present day ones like, uh, like Rui and Costa, uh, you know, good players. Uh, there are some great players from the past, too, you know, like, like Hugh Sabio. Oh, what a player Big Hugh he was, he really was. <laughs> He's a marvelous big player. But, you know, right now, you know, right now, no one's interested in all that. I mean, right now, all the medias and the papers and the television all want to talk about, right, is Wayne Rooney, you know? Young Wayne. John Wayne. <laughs> the Duke. Rooster Coburn, showing True Grit and the, the sense of you, Jimmy. Jimmy Stewart, it's a wonderful life, it really is. Because he was a national treasure, he really was. National treasure, na national velvet, with Elizabeth Taylor, and Mickey Rooney, and oh, Mickey, you're so fine, you're so fine, you blow my mind, oh, Mickey, oh, Mickey, and oh, Mickey Rooney. And Judy Garland, and Tojo, and you know, I've got a funny feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. We must be over the rainbow, around the bend, because, uh, I'm sorry, I mean, no, but quite seriously, though, no, quite seriously, 18-year-old Wayne Rooney, the new Pelly. I mean, surely he can't be having erection problems at his age, you know? <laughs> That's the Viagra. I played against him. <laughs> I did sue, I did sue, he was a big boy. Hard. Uh, who was I again? Chirino. No, yes, Portugal. Portugal, yes. And the 2004 Euros, well, well, Scotland really were in a great position. They really were, you know. I mean, okay, they lost the first match to Bulgaria, but they drew the second match against Latvia after being 4 nothing up. But uh, <laughs> it's true. And all they, had, all they had to do, all they had to do, you know, was beat the Czech publicans. <clears throat> by seven clear goals. <laughs> seven nil would have done it. Or eight one. Or nine. <laughs> anyway, seven clear goals, and we were there. Now, who would have thought, eh? Who would have thought Scotland would have been 10-3 up on the tracks only for Lee Wilkie to score an own goal in the 96 minute, eh? <laughs> I mean, who would have thought that it could have happened? Apart from everyone who's ever watched Scotland, you know, but uh, I don't know. I mean, footballers, well, in my day, you know, come back a bit now. But footballers in my day were nutters. We, or we really were, you know? Which was great because it made the, the football exciting and, and unpredictable, but. But footballers aren't footballers anymore. No, no, no. They're, they're, they're businessmen, you know? Which makes them dull, boring, predictable robots. Like, for example, Paul Gascoigne. <laughs> I, uh, I say I am, I'm the new look Paul Gascoigne. I don't call myself Gaz anymore. I'm looking for a new nickname. I thought maybe Skeletor myself, but... <laughs> My only joke. I... 
need to put a bit of weight on before I call myself out. Uh, <laughs> but now I'm, I'm much more serious now. You know, I'm, I'm player coach with Boston United, and uh, I think that means I get to play and, and, and drive the bus a bit. Uh, <laughs> But obviously, you know, I, you know, I'm very disappointed that England went out of Euro 2004 in a penalty shootout, and I was very disappointed with David Beckham. I mean, even I know it's the ball you're supposed to kick into the goals, not the penalty spot. <laughs> but you know, I really, you know, I really believed, you know, that in the knockout stages, you know, if England didn't lose to anyone, they had a good chance of winning it. But. Uh, <laughs> But you know, that's, that, that's life, you know, and sometimes life is very sad. And <laughs> you know, I, I think, you know, I, it's, you know, it's not the end of the world because, you know, it's a tournament, you know, I don't really understand. I mean, I, I don't see how you can have five countries in the semi-finals. <laughs> Portugal, Greece, Czech Republic, Holland, and the Netherlands. Uh, <laughs> Maybe my old gaffer, maybe my old gaffer Walter Smith can explain, because honestly I tell you, see when I was at Ibrox, Walter was like a manager to me. <laughs> well, obviously, you know, particularly at the present moment, you know, my name is, well, once again been linked to the Scotland job. So, what I would just say to the, to the SFA is, Send the details of the job to me, and if I ever go off my head, I'll give them a call. <laughs> but, you know, to be honest, you know, at the present moment, you know, when you've managed a club like Rangers, you know, then managing your countries, it's a big step down, you know. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, ask Dick Advocar. Yes, how you do? Hello, Glasgow! How you do? Yes! Hey! How you doing? Hey, wait, where are you from? Coatbridge? My favourite part of Ireland. Hey! <laughs> hey, titter ye not, titter ye not. I tell you, a funny thing happened to me in the way to the training ground. Some Dutch journalists come up to me and they say, hey, Dick! Why do you get so upset when we criticise you? Hey, that's what we're here for. Didn't the Scottish press criticise you when you were in Scotland? I said, don't be ridiculous. I was manager of Rangers. Hey, there they go. Then. That's a cracker. Hey! A Scotsman, an Englishman, an Irishman come up to me and say, Hey, Dick, how come you're not passionate about football? I said, what? Me? Not passionate about football? Do you not know see me on the television? Do you not know see my oxters? Hey! I was sweating buckets because I'm fat because I eat too many sausages. It's called the Lynx effect. There you go. Hey. <laughs> That's the way I'm telling them. Hey, but seriously, seriously, ladies and gentlemen, seriously, ladies and gentlemen, you know, in the semi final, at the end of the day, maybe some bad decisions were made. Well, I hold my hands up. Hey, Mark Overmars should have gone to the right. Arjun Robin should have gone to the left. And Edgar David should have gone to Spec Savers. Hey! <laughs> Shut that door! My name is the Kavaka! Good night! <laughs> His name is Bertie Votes! Good God! <laughs> okay, so my, my cheeky boys from. My cheeky boys from new generation do not win European Championships, so now I know what you will say. You will say, okay, who did win it? And the answer, of course, is Greece. So now you say, but how can this be? Greece are not a big country. They have German coach and they win. Scotland are not a big country. They have German coach and they win all of bugger. Um, <laughs> 
well, okay, I admit, maybe the big difference is with the coach. So I say, what would you rather have? A methodical, tenacious, shrewd technician? Or a jammy bastard like him? <laughs> but of course I'm disappointed that we go out. Okay, I am not born in Scotland. But I am defensive, aggressive, and a quivered wee shite. Um, <laughs> so I'm just like normal Scotsman. <laughs> and I tell you, no one feels the beamer of the red neck <laughs> or cringes more than I when I hear the three tenors singing their version of Flower of Scotland. <laughs> this is Bertie Volt's Scotland Today. Tomorrow, the world! Now I think my, my number spy, Thomas Burns, would like to say a few words. I think it's very, very true to say that, uh, that we, uh, that is, uh, <laughs> Scotland Football Club. <laughs> uh, uh, needed a, uh, needed a, a miracle to, to, to qualify for the latter stages of the tournament. I did try to secure that miracle um, <laughs> through some friends I have in the, in the one true church of Rome. <laughs> From my days as a, a fifth Dan teenage ninja altar boy. But the, the Vatican didn't want to know, so I had thought about taking my petition to an even higher authority, Father Ted. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, Caledonian brains don't dare serve as day, Craig Island. <laughs> Personally, I think we went out of the tournament uh, due to our uh, defensive setup. I think we got our, our marking tactics. The Reliance Custodial Services Handbook. <laughs> uh, uh, so, oh, uh, so, uh, it's also very, very true to say that uh, you know uh, there was a slight communi communication problem in the current cell. It's very, very difficult for the players, you know, when they when they can't understand a word a key man in, in, in that setup is saying him. So. Uh, I did speak to Barry Ferguson. <laughs> and Barry was, was, was very amenable to, to my suggestion that uh, I, I arrange uh, elocution lessons. Uh, he, even, he even suggested a, a, you know, a mode of transport to, to get there. He suggest, suggested I, I take a flying truck. Or at least I think that's what he says. But, uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, you know, it, it was it was need to be uh, so wasn't it? You know, so now we have to put that behind us and try and focus and look to qualify for the World Cup in, in 2006. We Barry has said if uh, if Scotland qualify, he'll wear a kilt. I tell you what, if Scotland qualify. I'll wear the sash and bang the big drum outside Cap and Roll.
up to now, we've only been kidding on. Maybe a reality check is well overdue. Fact, we didn't qualify for Euro 2004. Fact, we possibly might struggle to make the World Cup in 2006. Fact, it must be time for another one of those gritten-faced state of Scottish football documentaries fronted by Bob Whaling. Right? <laughs> Let's throw down the omelette and cut to the cheese. <laughs> okay, it would only be too easy peasy for me to bleat and whinge on and on and on and on and on about the state of Scottish football. So that's exactly what I will do. But first, it would be remiss of yours truly to pass up this opportunity to have a swatch at an even more important burning issue of the day. Namely, how come on the telly they always show the manky practice of slopping out just when you're having your tea? <laughs> how come as you're about to have the first spoonful of your pudding, some bloke saunters out his cell carrying a steaming chanty. <laughs> How come when you're about to enjoy a wee glass of ginger, there's a shot of a pail full of peans being poured down the pan? <laughs> Never mind prisoners' rights. What about the Scottish punter's right to enjoy his deep-fried dinner in a skitter free environment. <laughs> right, that issue breathes through like a breath of fresh air. So let's now move on to more serious matters. The Scottish football crisis. Can we halt this hullabaloo? Is there a future? Or is what's done in the past and all that is to come only that? which still lies ahead of us. What do the experts think? What is the forecast? Things could be about to turn dull because here's Kenny Dalgleish. <laughs> what is... Ken Douglas think of the current situation. I think the thoughts of Ken Douglas all depends on what current situation you're talking about. <laughs> but if you were to ask Ken Douglas if, if Ken Douglas thinks that investment at grassroots level could mean a new generation of kids being introduced to football and through coaching and encouragement, you know, could go in and make careers for themselves and therefore improve the, the general standard of football in Scotland, then Ken Douglas would say, no. <laughs> Ken Douglas knows this will not go down too well in certain quarters, but we in Scotland maybe need to look at the way the, the English celebrate sport. In this country, we tend to sneer. But, you know, down there, they revel in their great sporting traditions like Henman Hill, the boat race, and wrecking town centres and drink field riots every time the team gets a bad result. <laughs> Can things improve? Maybe it's I, maybe it's no. <laughs> Could be. Could no be. I'll tell you one thing. They'll need to come up with some new ideas to get the kids interested. For example, the football museum at Hamden. I've been there. It's full of old things. 
Good point, Kenny Dahl. So, what can football do to entice our kids who are, after all, our future wins? <laughs> Should the local councils be looking at the state of our municipal pitches? Surely it's bad enough for budding players trying to avoid the studs of the opposition without having to avoid broken buckfast bottles, <laughs> discarded johnnies, <laughs> and the obligatory Doug's key. <laughs> it's enough to give you the dry boat. <laughs> so, how can we confront this complacency and give it a boot in the stains? <laughs> An expert on such matters is Graham Souness. Can I just say something here? <laughs> Financial investment, is that the answer? Well, not necessarily. And that's from someone who's spent a fortune on Scottish football. And by Scottish football, I of course mean Rangers. <laughs> or as I call them these days, the Barras. Um, <laughs> You know, I was really gutted when the Craig Moore deal didn't go through because that would have meant I'd spent over £10 million on Rangers, which would have given me a 10% discount of any item of chunky gold jewelry in the Rangers shop. <laughs> now, of course, I'm a Rangers supporter, still have a soft spot for the club, so the last thing Alex McLeish needs is me offering opinions where they're not wanted. So, I won't say a word about watching Andrews having the same effect on me as a dose of liver salts. <laughs> and being surprised Rangers didn't encourage Bob Malcolm to continue with his movie career. I thought the lad was brilliant as Shrek. <laughs> and by the way, Someone asked me if I was coming back to manage Rangers. Well, hadn't heard that one, but now that I have, you can rest assured I'll do everything I can to keep that rumour going. <laughs> Just in case things go tits up at Newcastle. <laughs> Cheers, Sue. Scottish football can improve. But in order to do so, decisions have to be made in the corridors of power, or even the Scottish Parliament. So maybe it's time for the First Minister to prioritise, to spend less time in IKEA, <laughs> looking for new office furniture, <laughs> and do what he always does when he's confronted with a crisis and has near Scooby, a point a czar. And for me, there is only one man capable of doing that job, and he is Sir Alex Ferguson. Oh, well, you know, it's Abbey Proud. Oh, I'd, <laughs> I'd be very proud to be appointed Scotland's football czar because I feel that, hold a sec. Have I not been made that ages ago? <laughs> Did I then? No, I didn't think so. Um, <laughs> anyway, some of you, of course, will be, will be sitting there thinking, what does the word czar actually mean? Well, it's a Russian word. <laughs> That means Caesar. That's Caesar as in leader, not Caesar as in the dog food. Um, <clears throat> and what does a czar actually do? Well, he rules Russia. <laughs> or at least he did, until his missus got involved with wah wah Rasputin. <laughs> Rasputin. 
Ross just got this love machine. <laughs> there was a cat too, well he was gone, but uh, And the whole family, right, the whole family ended up getting malked <laughs> in the rain coal cellar. Which is very sad. But uh, of course, you know, there's no dispute in the fact that somebody has to take the horn by its bulls <laughs> and blow the cobwebs and the complacency off the Scottish game. And well, I'm just the hairdryer to do it. Because <laughs> I mean let's be I mean let's be brutally honest, you know, the fans have never had mere money in their pockets to blow in football. But Paradoxically, you know, the, the game's in a, in a precarious and perilous state that precipitates me being perturbed, purple nosed, and perplexed. <laughs> and saying that doesn't come easy to me. But, um, <laughs> well, this is a serious issue that must be addressed now. So I've decided I won't be at Manchester United much longer. I'm only looking for just one more. 10 year extension to my current contract. <laughs> then, after that, I promise I'm full time at the ZAN. And can I just say, though, I'm much happier with things the way they are now at Old Trafford. And uh, I'd just like to say a word about the signing that I made this season that's uh, given me, well, you know, the most satisfaction. And that's Liam Miller. <laughs> well, it's a very important signing for me, you know, because namely, I got it right up Celtic, but um, <laughs> and talking, talking of the old firm, you know, the question that the fans keep asking me is, you know, would I like to see Rangers and Celtic play in England? Well, you know, to be honest, right now, I'd much rather see Arsenal and Chelsea bugger off to play in Scotland. <laughs> The half-time whistle approaches, a metaphorical pie and bovril looms. But what will happen after the break? Will we rest on our laurels? Will we wrestle with our hardies? Will we sleep perchance to dream? What questions will be answered? What answers will be questioned? Will our thirst for knowledge take us to our goal? And if presented with a sitter, will we burst the net? Or, right now, would we rather hit the bar? You put your left leg in, your left leg out. Your left leg in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey cokey and you turn around. That's what it's all about. Or is it? <laughs> what about the slosh? What about the alley cat? With the heel, toe and away we go. Or what about the newest dance craze of them all? The Jimmy Calderwood Shuffle! You know, I uh, <laughs> wasn't a, an easy decision, you know, me uh, coming to Patodri, you know, um, when Stuart Mullen first made the approach, uh, I says to him, I says, okay, Stuarty. So I did. Uh, <laughs> before I consider moving, I have 
I have three important questions to ask you about Aberdeen. One, is the club in a solid financial footing? Two, is there a youth policy in place? And C, <laughs> are there plenty of sunbeds? <laughs> he said, I, I, I. I said, can fastic, I'm on my way. <laughs> but you know, I'll, uh, I'll not be easy, you know, because I'll need to re-educate the fans, you know, and alter a few traditions, you know, like uh, getting them to change the singing the Northern Lights of Old Aberdeen to the ultraviolet lights of Old Aberdeen, you know. And, <laughs> and me, you know, me, me and Jimmy Nick, you know, we want to get the, the fans as excited, you know, when they hear the words Aberdeen Football Club as they did just now when they hear the words sheep dip. Um, <laughs> You know, and to, to that end, you know, to that end, you know, the, the chairman and the director of football have, have promised me a substantial transfer budget. Just as soon as he takes Stevie Parsons empty bottles back to the shop, you know. <laughs> Shaking that ass. <laughs> but if I could just, uh, you know, I'd just say, uh, a few words, you know, about the uh, old team and wish them all the best, and that is to Dunfermline, you know. Great club, great club. The only club in Scotland where the word bard doesn't mean you're not getting in. <laughs> it means Jim Leishman. <coughs> Into Europe, and off we went. But our trip was a fiasco, because half our fans went to Iceland, the other half went to Tesco. <laughs> um, Why did the opposition hate East End Park and play in the mighty pars? It's cause when you slide along our pitch, you fairly burn your arse. Um, <laughs> what's wrong with football in this day and age? The players are so mamby-pamby. What they need to do is bring back conscription. Or even just John Lambie. <laughs> See before I came on here tonight. <laughs> The wee last thing the wing says, could you maybe, could you maybe try and at least go through the first minute without swearing? I says, don't be stupid, hen. A minute without swearing, of course I can, I'll prove it. A minute, for now, right. Ah, fuck, I can't be bored. <laughs> uh, Look, uh, I, I can see there's, I can see there's wains in, right, and I, I don't want to cause any offence, so I'll just away and clean all the pigeon shit out of my ducat, and uh, <laughs> and I'll let Jim Spence deal with all the bullshit for the fans. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Jim Spence here, backward by public demand from the public, the fans forum, the forum of the fans, for the fans of the forum in the forum. You might be a Kamarnock fan who feels the cost of watching football these days is too big a strain on the wage packet. You might be a Dundee fan thinking, what's a wage packet? <laughs> or an Arab fan wondering if once they finished in Iraq, will America invade Tanadice? <laughs> you could be a Motherwell fan concerned about Team selection at Fur Park, or a Partick Thistle fan concerned about the wine selection in the ubiquitous chirp. Um, or you might even be a Livingston fan. No luck. Um, <laughs> what about Hibernian, Tony Mowbray, or Scott Brown? Which Hibby is the most hacket? And uh, <laughs> what about Hearts, the greeting faced Gorgi Gadges? Uh, how did the jinx jittery jabbering jambos? The cousins of William feel about feel about being taken over by a Lithuanian. Or are they happy to be owned by a long life battery? Um, <laughs> let us know what you think. We'll let you know what we think on the fans forum of the fans in a forum. Just in case I'm wasting my time here. If any fans are out there not listening, could they give us a call and 
let me know. <laughs> Honest to God! Where are those provincial pundits ever going to learn that real football fans don't give a toss about the, the wee diddy teams propping up the SPL? All that really matters are the big two, the old firm, the totally sensational, magnificently superb, utterly glorious Glasgow Rangers, the Jazz, the Teddy Bears, the Sons of William! And then... Of course, it's all changed at the BBC this year. No more live SPL football on the BBC, which comes as a great relief to yours truly, Chico, because it means Neymar sitting behind the Celtic dugout at the potato bowl. Looking like a contestant in a new game show. <laughs> I'm a Protestant, get me out of here! <laughs> Predictions? Well, speaking as a St. Mirren fan. <laughs> <laughs> what? Of no fixed allegiance, I would have to say the Championship Rangers, the Scottish Cup Rangers, <laughs> CIS We Diddy Cup Rangers, the Test Match Rangers, the Nobel Peace Prize Rangers, the American Presidential Election Rangers. Why? Because they don't have Henrik Larsson anymore. <laughs> Uh, uh, <clears throat> a sad, sad loss to the Scottish game. <laughs> As I'm sure former teammate Paul Lambert will testify to. I, I to say, I don't, <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't think you can play Senate like, because how can you play Senate Placeable and put something <laughs> in Henry's place? I, I don't, I don't know. Cause <laughs> may, maybe, maybe you can hang it away back, can you? Because uh, <laughs> guys, guys like Henry, you know, I mean, the only treble trade in the nation proper to the majority, eh? but. I uh, swallowed to throw up and jumbly fairly day and I can't put it any clearer than that, you know. Uh, I'm I mean, you know, I mean, every, every silly fan loved Henrik. Uh, even the glamorous ones like, uh, like Jim Kerr. A bloke, a legend, a legendary legend, a Celtic legend who is legendary. <laughs> World class is a phrase used all too often, but in Henrik, I can see through the hype, the hysteria, and my mascara. <laughs> and behold, a genius, a name of whom was present, will ever forget. Henrik's finest earl in the half <laughs> when he scored two astonishing goals in Seville and yet one of hee-haw. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I've got the carpet fitters coming to examine my head. 
but here's Barry Ferguson to keep you amused. Oh, I am. Uh, I'm really enjoying things now at, at Blackburn Rangers. The gaffers made me the skipper, even although I know nothing about boats. But <laughs> he's obviously got great confidence in me, because that's why he's led it to Newcastle. <laughs> uh, see, when I, see when I first came down here, I was up to high door. <laughs> know what I mean? I mean, see, before every game, I was that nervous. I mean, you couldn't pull a needle out from my arse with a, with a tractor and a toro, you know? <laughs> then, of course, I get the injury, and that just puts a tin lid in it, you know? I was stuck in the house. And I actually ended up suffering from depression. But the nut doctor, he, <laughs> he says that's quite normal for folk that watch Trisha every day. <laughs> There's been a few changes down here, there are a few new faces. Lots of good boys in their 18s, their 19s, and their 20s. And, uh, <laughs> They're, they're, all, they're all chapping at the bits for a game in a big team. Big ammo. Still here. Still a fud. <laughs> Mind he brought out the own recipe book about, about love food and stuff. What was that all about? I says to him once, I says, oh, smug boys. <laughs> Do you really make all the recipes? Or do you just make it in the microwave out of a pack of everybody else? <laughs> he goes, oh, I don't no understand the way. <laughs> right enough. Everybody goes on no understand way when I talk to them, you know. But all the same, I, I have to admit, you know, the, the bears loved them, you know. Although I don't understand it. I mean, what is it with rangers and, and pure fannies, you know? <laughs> They've even signed some, some left back in loan for Liverpool called Vagino. <laughs> they have. <laughs> of course, even though I'm doing here, you know, I still want to see how, how the Teddies are getting on, but I, I don't understand this Satanta deal. I thought he only came at Christmas time. <laughs> Mind you, you know, I suppose there's always all the other telly channels. I can always watch the pies on the sky. <laughs> Barry Ferguson, what a character. <laughs> what a ranger. Possibly the best of all time. After Lodo. <clears throat> right, well, the news never stands still, and the football news is no exception. So, brace yourself, mates. Here's the latest football headlines from all around the world and other places as well. <laughs> A recent survey amongst Rangers fans 
has revealed that the majority believe that David Murray has plans that will see Rangers' debt wiped out within a year, and that Alex McLeish's plans that will see Rangers' season hopes wiped out within a month. <laughs> Cheers, Alex, if you're in, mate. Uh, <laughs> Scotland boss Bertie Votes has revealed that he went into the Slovenia match at Hamden with a plan formulated after the Spain friendly. Had Slovenia taken the lead, he wanted the midfield to locate the wing backs, the wing backs to locate the strikers, and the substitutes to locate the main fuse box. <laughs> What you like, Bertie. Um, <laughs> Celtic and Brian Scott have settled out of court. The club were happy to come to an agreement because they didn't want their former physio revealing embarrassing information such as the womanizing habits of certain players and John Hartson's actual weight. <laughs> So, Charlie, mate, uh, in the name of the wee man, I mean, what do you make of that? James, I'm going to lay my cards in the fire. <laughs> Keep my irons close to the table. Raise my head above the parakeet and say, this won't be an easy season for Martin O'Neill. Celtic have lost a special player. They have lost a talent of great immensity. But although it may not happen overnight, Celtic fans will have faith that eventually Martin O'Neill will replace Jamie Smith. <laughs> and let's be cute here, James. Pressure-wise, Alex McLeish is under it big time. This is a crucial season for Rangers. Another Celtic whitewash with Dulux Mongolia will not be tolerated. But what Rangers fans have to realise is that their team hasn't got a Sydney divine right to win anything. But listen, James, at the end of the day, many people like me, and I include myself in that, <laughs> are merely speculating. Anything could happen at the spur of a hat. Right, um, <laughs> you know, Charlie, mate, it's, it's hard to believe, but that was even a bigger load of pish than the last lot. <laughs> which, which makes me want to ask, in the pish stakes, how come you're so good? Um, but don't answer that, mate. In fact, don't, don't, <laughs> don't say another word. Um, <laughs> Because I believe we can now go over to Ibrick Stadium, that magnificent all-seater outdoor lodge. <laughs> where Alex McLeish is speaking to anyone who will listen to him. <laughs> yes, it will be difficult. And as much as it'll, it'll not be easy, but <laughs> I relish the challenge. Going out of the Champions League was a, was a huge disappointment. We'd prepared really well for the second leg. To fire up the players, someone brought in a movie projector. <laughs> Somebody else brought in a widescreen version of Braveheart. And we showed it on Alex Ray's forehead. Now, of course, the first match in Moscow was overshadowed by something that caused Rangers fans an awful lot of anguish. Morris Ross is defending. <laughs> and of course, there was that wee incident when a, when a Russian player put the head in Alex Ray's boot. <laughs> As you would expect, the press twisted things 
and <laughs> claimed it was the other way about, that, that Alex Ray had, had kicked the Russian player. All I can say is that after the match, I spoke to Alex about the incident. He said he did mean it, and I believe him. <laughs> uh, I don't mean to, to, to sound paranoid or anything, but you, you have to, to wonder about the press in this country, and if maybe there's a, a wee bit of an anti-Rangers agenda at the moment. I mean, Celtic, Celtic signed Brazilian World Cup winner Janinho, and it's, it's all over the, the newspapers. I will. Rangers sign Derek Carcare for Queen's Park, and there's hardly a mention. <laughs> but of course, the, the big talking point, the big talking point off the field is, is David Murray's face been back in the hot seat. <laughs> and John McClellan's face been back in Tam Shepard's window. But, um, <laughs> The chairman has assured me that I have his full backing and that if any moves were made to replace me, I'd be the first person to, to read about it in the papers. <laughs> uh, so, all in all, I would say that despite a few setbacks, I can definitely see a light at the end of the tunnel. The only thing is, the light could be Fernando Rickson's motor coming in the opposite direction. Uh, yeah, it's for sure. It's, uh, it's me, Fernando Rickson, or as they call me in Newton Mearns, the Rocket Man. Uh, <laughs> okay, so sometimes I go a wee bit radio rental, but I think for sure uh, sometimes people forget how many positions I'm comfortable in, you know. <laughs> Last year I would say my best position was I was between the, the, the two up front. I tell you, what a pair of hooters Jordan has, I tell you. <laughs> to be honest, uh, I thought I might be leaving Rangers in the summer, uh, but uh, Graham Sooners did not come in for me, but uh, so <laughs> I'll just be happy to, to stay and try to win back the title. Uh, to do that, we must intimidate Selig, and uh, I tell you for sure, it's not so easy to scare Chris Sutton or John Hudson, but it's quite easy to scare Sean Maloney. You just do this. Boo! Like fries. <laughs> Me's don't like Fernando Rickson. He's got scary eyes. He does, does bad things in the pitch. Kicks you. Pushes you. Trips you up. <laughs> By the way, I think that was terrible with that bad newspaper said that my uncle, Neil Lennon, had done outside Joe Buffalo's at the Christmas party in Newcastle. They said my uncle Neil ran after a cameraman and probably, probably took his camera. Oh, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is just rubbish. Because everybody knows that, that my uncle Neil can't run. You know, some people say that there's a, there's a vendetta on my Uncle Neil, but I'm telling you, I haven't seen him with a vendetta <laughs> or any other kind of ice cream. But <laughs> I'm not bored because one day I'll be a big boy and then I'll know the answers to questions like, did the green Teletubby and the blue Teletubby ever fight? And see when Jack fell down and broke his crown? Did the referee stop him right away because it was a head injury? <laughs> Maybe the gaffer, Matt O'Neill, will tell me, and, 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 I need a pee pee. <laughs> well, no. 
Listen, seriously. Um, <laughs> make, make no mistake. I mean, I mean it. I, I really do. If, um, if Sean Maloney needs a pee-pee, then... <laughs> Celtic will do everything to, to, to help him achieve that. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we'd we, 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 we draw the line at, at, at lifting him up to the, the urinal, you know? And holding his wee man from. But, um, <laughs> getting back to the football, though, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm not being, you know, I'm a moaning mini. Not in the least, far from it. But seriously, I, I, I really mean it. I, I really do. Um, taking a forward-looking stance. I, well, I, I have to say that, that Henrik leaving was a massive blow to the club. I mean, a massive blow. And it, it came right out of the blue. It, it really did. And uh, we only had a mere 14 months to prepare for it. And so we, 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 we scoured the world for a replacement and finally came up with, with, with Nacho, Novo and Dundee. But, you know, Nacho was, was, was not that keen to, to, to come to Celtic. So we, we decided that a so-so Novo was a no-no. So there we go. And, um, but listen, hey, in the end, you know, we got, we got the man we were really after. And uh, Janino is a player, you know, who has, has always wanted to play for Celtic. Uh, the, 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 the minute um, Middlesbrough told him they didn't want him. And uh, OK, maybe, maybe, maybe he's not the most physical, physical player I've ever signed. You know, I, actually, to, to be perfectly honest, you know, when, when I think about it, at Celtic Park, we, we've got, we've got um, match day mascots who are bigger than Janino. Um, but why, why, why don't you judge for yourself? Because, because here he is now. Well, I'm, I'm delighted to come to such a big club uh, because everyone knows the Celtic Football Club is, uh, is a big club. And um, I was happy to play against Rangers because Rangers uh, are also a big club. And I was also pleased to play against Craig Moore because, as everyone knows, he has a big clubber. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, was, I was happy to beat Rangers. Uh, Alan Thompson scored what I think they call a like, get it right up your goal. And, uh, <laughs> and I, 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 win, I win Man of the Match award, but do not get a bottle of champagne because, unlike with the BBC, Setanta are a bunch of miserable bastardos. Uh, <laughs> Now, if you excuse me, I look forward to Champions League, uh, so I go now and get my official club suit. Uh, I'm made to measure baby girl from mother care. <laughs> well, no, listen, seriously, I, 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 if I can just come back in there, I, I, you know, I'd, like to, I'd like to thank Janine for reminding me of, of the Champions League, because, you know, I'm, you know we're, we're delighted to be in it. I, I really am. And when I saw who'd be drawn, you know, Barcelona, AC Milan, Shakhtar Donetsk, you know, I, I have to say I was... I was bitterly excited, you know, and <laughs> bitterly excited by, 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 the, by the prospect. Of, of course, you know, of course, I, I wanted to, to bring in more players. I, I, re, I really did. And, 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 you know, if we get a few bad, re, bad results, I suppose we can expect the, the Celtic in crisis and, and, and broken crests appearing in, in, in the Daily Ranger, which, which is fine, you know. I mean, um, we, we'll, we'll, we'll have... We'll have um, We'll have deserved it for not being in such great nick as, as Rangers. And I'm, I'm, sure the, the, I'm, sure, I'm sure the fans of, of both teams are thinking as they, well, as they, as they are perfectly entitled to. Yeah, I mean, they, they really are. Uh, and because, you know, I mean, let's face it, you know, the fans, you know, they're the lifeblood of the game. You know, they, well, they really are. And of course, you know, where there's blood, there's clots. My name is Sean Lewis, and I am a typical Celtic fan. I bless myself in front of Rangers supporters. But I haven't been to a pineapple for 20 years. My name is Donald Finlay. And I am a typical Rangers fan, and no one likes me. I don't care.
I have a tattoo of the huddle on my back. A tattoo of Our Lady of the Immaculate Contraption on my left arm. A tattoo of an Irish trickler being held aloft by the bachelors on my right arm. Henrik Larson on my right breast. Hooping the huddle down on my left breast. I'm also thinking of having something special done around my privates. The face of my all-time Celtic hero, Tommy Gemmell, with my Bobby as his nose. <laughs> Apart from the one across my chest of Her Most Glorious Britannic Majesty, looking down from a sun-kissed heaven, as King William III on his white charger stuffs the mix at the boin, wearing a baseball cap emblazoned with a red hand, holding a blado in one hand, a Union Jack in the other, flanked by Britannia, a British bulldog, and Mark Hadley. <laughs> I don't have any tattoos. I know. I know some Rangers fans, sorry, Huns. <laughs> and I say to them, I am not a bigot. I have never once put a brick through a window. I say live and let live in different areas. <laughs> and I'm not paranoid. No way am I paranoid. Who said I was paranoid? Was it you? <laughs> or was it him? Because somebody's been following me all day. <laughs> but I tell you, you know, I'm proud of Celtic. I really am. Especially all the charity work they do, like offering handouts to old folks like Dwight York and Marcel Desailles. <laughs> I have nothing against Celtic per se apart from the beggars being in existence. <laughs> but I object to them, not on theological grounds, but over musical differences. Scotland's traditional, cheery Presbyterian folk songs <laughs> about being knee-deep in other people's blood. <laughs> Not recommending surrender as a viable option in a siege situation. And wearing a certain item of your father's clothing every 12th day of July. Are being polluted by their obscene diddly diddly dee music. Belching out those dens of iniquity, the Irish pubs, which are springing up throughout this great, dour faced country of ours. I hope this clears up my position and makes it abundantly clear that I have nothing against a team full of Tims, which is just as well, or I wouldn't be watching Rangers these days. <laughs> A game lasts 90 minutes, maybe longer if the old firm are chasing a winner. <laughs> Life lasts a wee bit longer. A show like this lasts somewhere in between, and now it is drawing to its close. But no matter how long we have to look for answers, I somehow get the feeling we will always be on to plums. <laughs> That's why we keep coming back to this game. Because to crack the meaning of football is to crack the meaning of life. That's assuming football fans have a life they want to know the meaning of in the first place. <laughs> so, if I don't know the meaning and you don't know the meaning, then who does? Maybe somebody needs to come back from the future to let 
us know. the bumps. <laughs> yes, it's me, Francis Frank. Frankie boy, <laughs> Maka Macavani, the Spermanator. <laughs> Hope back from the year 2029 to let you know what's been happening in the future. Rangers still haven't managed to beat Celtic. <laughs> but they are, they are on the light reins, according to their manager, Chick Young. <laughs> Celtic are celebrating a special occasion it's the 25th anniversary of Henrik Larsson's hat trick against them for Barcelona in the Champions League. Look at that. <laughs> and Betty Vogt still insists. <laughs> he won't quit Scotland. <laughs> but I'm telling you, see the future. No, it's cracked up to me, I'm telling you. No, no. You're much better off in the, the here and now. Much more interesting things happening. Like, for example, Wayne Rooney. There you go. 18 year old, and after my new for 30 million snid. Hmm. At least his choice of a football team is better than his choice of a prosy. <laughs> Did you see that in the papers, eh? Face like a bag of spuds. <laughs> Fag hunting for the gum. Playing keepy up here with thropney bits. <laughs> non affectionately as the old slapper. That guy just crossed his legs there, you know. <laughs> I'm watching you. <laughs> Tell you something else I've noticed. Scotland guys wearing England caps. What's that all about, eh? I mean, see me, to be honest with you, I never really gave a toss about the England team, you know. I mean, up until last week, I thought I thought Todd Grip was an Irish invention for leaving constipation, you know. <laughs> I 
But what really intrigues me is their manager. <laughs> Sven Goran Eriksson, eh? Sven has been from the, the sexually liberated Sweden, the country that Gita is Abba. So I suppose when the FA appointed him, they did take a chance, take a chance. <laughs> But listen, leaving all that aside, leaving all that aside, I have to ask you, what about the shagging that guy gets up to? <laughs> he makes me look like St. Frankie of Assisi. <laughs> Look at him as well, he's a pure growler. <laughs> what does any woman, especially a pure pump like Orika Johnson, see in an old slap head like him? <laughs> Love to know what they're rubbing at these Swedish meatballs, you know. <laughs> His legs are stone crossed, by the way. <laughs> What about his, his former bird, eh? Big Nancy. <laughs> you would, wouldn't you, eh? <laughs> okay, okay. Close up, close up. There is a case for polyfilla. But I bet she knows a hanger too, eh? <laughs> bet she knows many ways to clap the dog, eh? <laughs> and what about going for Aya Alam? Hey! She get paid half a million quid by the newspapers. For telling me what it was like to get rumped by Spain and on Pallius block. See when I heard about the money they were talking about there, do you know what my first thought was? I wish it was me they'd shagged. <laughs> I'm only kidding, eh? I'm only kidding. <laughs> See on, on Nadia, a big brother, eh? <laughs> a man's brain and a woman's bits. See, if that was me, I wouldn't be at the house. <laughs> But leaving aside the ladies, the birds, the women, the gimp. <laughs> the partners always ask me, you know, I always say, Frankie, have you any regrets? I say, no, nay. I have loved every minute of whatever it is I've been doing, you know. <laughs> of course, the football is over for me now, you know. I, I did think about, about coaching, but... Clubs aren't they generally all that keen on employing somebody to teach the youngsters how to score like the Frankie boys. <laughs> so I've done to a new way of expressing myself. Poetry. Hey, poetry. Words in that. But uh, no, just your ordinary poetryisms. No, no, no. What I more is a is a beat poet. Set in the ambulance here. Oh, gonna give us a stool. See, being a beat poet, it's brilliant, you know, because it means you can chop fish and still get a for it. 
Thank you. I thought it'd be a Janet to be bringing it on. <laughs> Give us a wee tinkle. <laughs> it's warm. <laughs> See him. Being a beat poet is cool. Being a beat poet means you can tackle complex matters such as sex. S E C K S. <laughs> Love. L U V V E. Bugs. B U R. D Z <laughs> Fanny Nanny Shireen Nanjiani <laughs> She reads me the news She gives me the blues What gives me the rage No ram and bad wands Sarah Heaney in kinky boots. Jane Lewis, beige trouser suit. She dares, she wears the best from the racks. From Primark and or TK Maxx. <laughs> from STV to BBC. The sport from Rona, instant Bona. <laughs> A burning flame that flashes in the pan, ignited by kerosene idisan. Here's Heather with the weather. My eyes stare. Hello there. <laughs> and still I ask. Who am I? I'm no Brad Pitt. I'm no George Clooney. I am the sea in Shocker Rooney. <laughs> Francis, Frank, Frankie boy, that's right. Every button here could be getting it the night. <laughs> Thank you.